Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for our free webinar, Tips and Tricks for Telemedicine Insurance Billing in Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, D.C., featuring Sarit Hirschkorn. My name is Jeff Bloom, Education Marketing Manager here at LASA OMS. With the current state of the acupuncture profession, the nation, and the world, we have decided to add to our webinar offerings to bring in experts in telemedicine, practice management, and insurance billing, in addition to our traditional clinical skills-based webinars. Our guest speaker today graciously agreed to offer sessions each day for specific states so we can focus the content and share the most relevant with you. I would just like to go through a few housekeeping items now. We recommend viewing the webinar in Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, as you may experience slowness in other browsers. If you have any experience with issues or uh, with sound, with freezing, please try refreshing the page, and that should usually resolve most issues. And then also, I'd like you to all know that if you're registered for this event, you will receive a link five minutes after we conclude to watch the webinar on demand. Lastly, we will be holding all questions till the end. If you have a question for our guest speaker, please make sure to use the questions tab to assure that we ask it at the end. And to communicate with any other attendees or technical difficulties, please use the chat tab. Now for our featured speaker, we are proud to introduce Sarit Hirschkorn. Sarit, co-founder and co-owner of All AccuServices LLC, a company specializing in insurance billing services for acupuncturists, massage therapists, naturopathic doctors, characters, physical therapists, and social workers. After spending nearly two decades working in corporate benefits outsourcing for multi-million dollar companies such as PricewaterhouseCoopers, ACS, and Mellon Bank, Sarit now applies her deep knowledge and understanding of the insurance industry to the field of insurance billing for holistic healthcare providers. Please join me in welcoming Sarit. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, as Jeffrey said, my name is Sarit Hirschkorn. Um, Lassa was gracious enough to host me every day for the last two weeks to talk about telehealth and telemedicine. Uh, I am the co-founder, co-owner of a company called All Accu Services. Uh, I have a partner. Um, that partner is an acupuncturist who is licensed in the state of New York and in the state of New Jersey. What I want to do today is I want to talk a little bit about terminology, really understanding the difference between telehealth and telemedicine. We'll talk about what falls under the scope of telemedicine, specifically for an acupuncturist. We'll talk about how often we can bill for it. We'll actually look at a claim and see how to submit a claim um, to the insurance company. And then we'll take a quick look at high level um, at the different insurance companies and what they're offering. And we'll talk about um, place of service that you're going to submit, how you should charge for that code. And what I'll do is I'll give you a formula to come up pricing for the code, but not a price. And then we'll talk about HIPAA, we'll talk about consents. Um, so why don't we get started? Um, let me just go to the next slide. Here we go. So oops, what is telehealth? Telehealth is the means of using electronic information um, and communication by a provider provides services um, to their patients. Things that they're gonna be providing as is an assessment of diagnosis, consultation, treatment, education, it's underline education, care management, and then self-management of the patient. That is the big umbrella of telehealth. Telemedicine falls under telehealth. Um, it's just one avenue where the provider actually uses the phone, texts, email, a fax, or a live stream video where you hear the patient and the patient hears you. That is telemedicine. It does have to be a patient initiated service. And yes, the patient has to ask for it. However, you can reach out to your patient and let them know that you are providing these services. You can reach out to your patients to see how they're doing. And by you letting them know that you're providing these services, um, the patient will reach out to you and schedule a session. And that is already included under um, a patient initiated service. These codes are considered to be an evaluation code. So everything that we are going to be doing as an acupuncturist under telemedicine is an evaluation. 
Um, it's very similar to the valuation codes that we use today. When the patient sits in front of us, we are going to give these patients the same um, standard of care. And we'll talk about what it is that I can give my patient sitting in front of them on a live stream video versus the patient actually sitting in the room. Um, the law says that it has to be offered to an existing patient that is already under your care, either for acute or chronic pain. Now, if you are using the method of a phone conversation with your patient, so not a live stream video, but a phone conversation, and that leads to you seeing the patient within the next 24 hours, you're not going to be charging for telemedicine, but you're going to be charging for the actual acupuncture session. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about what we are seeing in Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, in, in terms of what the law tells us. The law tells us that if we're using a private payer, such as Aetna, Cigna, United, those are all private payers, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, they cannot exclude telemedicine if the provider is allowed to provide these services. So, for example, if, if you are allowed to provide acupuncture services and um, your, your plan allows it, then um, you, your, your plan also has to allow telecent. Keep that in your mind and let's take that with a grain of salt because there are some exclusions to that. And we'll talk about the exclusions um, when we talk about the different insurance companies. You'll see many, many different exclusions. Yes, we talked about what the law says, but you'll see many exclusions that were adopted by the different insurance companies as we get to talk about um, these insurance companies. So let's talk about what we can provide under telemedicine. So the patient is sitting with us and they're sitting in front of us via a live stream video. They're not with us in the room. Usually when a patient is with us with the room, we will do an evaluation. And the next thing that we will do is we'll needle the person. In this case, all that you're doing is an evaluation. You can discuss with your patient um, about their condition, maybe previous condition or current condition that they're suffering from. You can do a tongue diagnosis. We're seeing many providers that are working with their patients, um, by them with some Qigong, Qigong exercises or yoga or Tai Chi, either they're doing it with them, they're either demonstrating um, and they're giving it to the patient as a takeaway um, to do it on their own. Um, we're also seeing providers give their patients breathing exercises and some meditation tips uh, on the phone. Nutrition consultation is something else that you can discuss with your patient. You can talk about how, how to boost your immune system, maybe better eating it while they're at home. Um, so that's something else that can be discussed with the patient. Acupressure points. So you can show your patients trigger points to help them alleviate pain um, that they have discussed with you. The use of hot and cold packs is something else that um, you can show your patient how to use, um, of course, only if they need it. And herbal consultations. So if you are prescribing your patients herbs, how to, um, how to cook the herbs, how to take the herbs if they're taking them in a pill form, um, it's something else that you can guide your patient through the session. The use of ear seeds. So we are seeing many clients send their patients ear seeds. They're using that as a revenue stream. It's not tons of money. Um, but what you will see is that they're guiding their patients on how to use ear seeds during, um, during the consultation. And just keep that in mind, decision-making and notes preparation is something else that is going to go into measuring how we bill for telemedicine. So let's put that aside and let's talk about the extra, extra codes that we're actually gonna be using. So here are the codes. We're looking at two different categories. We're looking at a category of a video versus phone. The codes are identical. We're looking at three different categories when I talk about the range of time. So we're looking at about five, 10 minutes, 11 to 20, or 21 to 30. And this is an or, not an end. So if I spent 16 minutes with my patient, okay, 
I'm going to fall into the second category, which falls into 11 to 20. If I spend five minutes with Jeffrey today and five minutes with Jeffrey tomorrow, I'm going to add the, the time up. And I'm not going to use two separate codes. I'm going to use one code. And we'll talk about how to measure that time. So first of all, these codes can be used once every seven days, OK? Unless, and there's always an exclusion, unless the patient sent themselves with a new diagnosis. So today I had a discussion with Jeffrey. And Jeffrey was suffering from you know, terrible back pain. But tomorrow, Jeffrey contacted me, and he suffered migraine. I can build again for the telemedicine code. But if Jeffrey wanted tomorrow to still talk about his back pain, which is the same exact diagnosis, I'm going to add today's minutes, tomorrow's minutes, and I'm going to add it all up together, and I'm going to bill for the total number of minutes um, for Jeffrey. Anything over 21 minutes, we're still using the same code, okay? So whether I spent 60 minutes with Jeffrey or 21 minutes with Jeffrey, and I used the last code, either 99423 or 99443, and I'm going to get paid the same. So for my 21 minutes, I'm getting the same amount paid as, I've, as if I spent 60 minutes with Jeffrey, okay? These sessions must be documented. So you either use electronic documentation or hard copy, the same as you would have used if it's the patient that was sitting in front of you. I want to talk about um, how we are going to bill for it. Um, and what we'll do is we'll bring up, and just as we look at these codes, um, we'll look at the claim first. I'm going to have Jeffrey bring it up. And then we'll talk about what insurance companies are really allowing us to use um, for them some of these claims. So to simplify this, right, here's a HICFA form or a 1500 form. And what we put in column A is the start date and the end date of the session. For a place of service, we're going to use 02. 02 represents, zero 02 represents um, telemedicine. So it represents session was done via a telemedicine code, as opposed to usually we put 11, which represent an office setting. We put in the CPT code, okay, which is gonna be your telemedicine code, and then you're gonna use a modifier of 95. That is true for most cases, and we'll talk about exceptions that we are seeing with the different insurance companies. So that is how you're going to submit your claim. Let's go back to our presentation. We'll talk about pricing. And then realistically, we'll show what insurance companies are allowing and what they're not allowing. Because as I said, there are many, many exceptions depending on the insurance companies that come to which codes you should use and whether you can use it for new patient versus existing patient. So um, I put in the code 97810 on the top corner. And I wanted to show in comparison to what you are charging for 97810, what you should be charging for these telemedicine codes. So um, if I charge $100 for 97810 in compen, and I'm going to round it up or down just to simplify it in, um, in comparison, I would charge about 40% of that for that first range of minutes. So I would charge about $40. For the second sets, right, so for, for the second range, which is 11 to 20 minutes, I would charge about 80 or 80 percent. And I'm looking at both codes, right, rounding it a little up or a little down. And then for the last code, I will charge, you see that it's worth more than one set of needling, so charge about $120. So that's my pricing. That's the formula that I would use to come up with pricing, depending on what you're charging that first set of needling. Now, let's talk, let's talk about what goes into me counting the minutes. And I want to go back into this slide. Okay. So what goes back? The first thing is, before I meet with Jeffrey, I'm going to review the notes from my last session, either when Jeffrey was in the office, or if I met with him a week ago, I will read those notes. So if Jeffrey, if I had a session with Jeffrey at one o'clock, and I spent five minutes prior to that reviewing notes. I'm going to write down those five minutes in my notebook as 
time spent on reviewing notes. I then spent with Jeffrey 15 minutes in my session, whether I discussed with him his current condition, did a tongue diagnosis, and then we discussed the condition. Um, I gave Jeffrey maybe some exercise tips or nutritional tips. So 15 minutes altogether with Jeffrey in my session. So my session ended at 1.15. And at 1.15, I started documenting the session, everything that I discussed with Jeffrey, what conclusions I reached, and what advice I gave Jeffrey during my session. Another five minutes for documentation. Altogether, I spent 25 minutes, five minutes before the session, 15 minutes with Jeffrey during the session, and then five minutes um, to document the actual session. That's 25 minutes. With that said, if I have a live video with Jeffrey, I'm going to charge for the 99423 because my minutes range from 21, over 21 minutes. That's the code I am going to be using. Let's talk about insurance companies and what they're allowing us and what they're not allowing us. So insurance companies are changing what they're allowing on a daily basis. A, we're seeing that insurance companies are waiving co-pays, they're waiving co-insurance, they're waiving deductibles um, when you're providing telemedicine. Furthermore, we see these insurance companies are not just allowing existing patients to be seen via telemedicine, we are seeing that they're allowing new patients um, to be seen via telemedicine. So this is a high level chart that we have put together. It specifically focuses on patients that we have called in does it mean that now Aetna covers telemedicine for every one of their patients? Absolutely not, okay? Does it mean that Cigna covers telemedicine for every one of their patients? Absolutely not. It depends on the patient's plan, depends if the patient had acupuncture coverage before and if you were allowed to perform acupuncture. And if so, then they may cover telemedicine. It depends if it's a self-funded plan. Self-funded plans can decide their own guideline and they actually can exclude telemedicine. So we're seeing that most of these insurance companies allowed acupuncturists to warm acupuncture before to your patients will allow, will allow telemedicine um, by the provider. We're seeing that most of them are publishing a start date and an end date. So most of them started sometime in the beginning of March, middle of March, depending on the insurance company. And we're seeing that a lot of them are ending telemedicine in June. With that said, I would keep on checking their website. I would keep calling in them in if your state is still a state of emergency and see if they will take it post June. So for example, we're seeing the Care First, which is Blue Cross Blue Shield, have published, they have started telemedicine immediately when we were part of the pandemic, and they're not publishing an end date. They're saying, we will let you know, as long as we're in a state of emergency, as long as Maryland is in a state of emergency, we'll keep telemedicine open, okay? I wanna focus on Cigna. Cigna came out about two or three weeks ago and said, don't use telemedicine codes. Our system cannot handle so many telemedicine codes. Use regular evaluation codes. So your regular 99211s and 99212s and 99213s, et cetera, that you've been using to evaluate the patient, those are the codes that we want you to use. We want you to use 11 as a place of service. But note that. They don't want you to use a modifier of 25. What they want you to do is to use a modifier of GQ, okay? That will indicate the person was seen via telemedicine to their system. However, they do want you to use the regular evaluation codes. And that applies to many of our insurance companies that we are um, speaking to. And it changes on a daily basis. So. Um, if I were you, and I had a patient who was interested in these telemedicine codes, and I suggest you guys take a screenshot of this as we are not distributing um, these slides, um, but feel free to take screenshots and I'm going along. Um, I would call the insurance company. And first thing that I would want to find out when I'm calling these insurance company is, is A, 
is my patient covered for telemedicine? If they are covered for telemedicine, is telemedicine can be provided by a licensed acupuncturist. You want to make sure that you can provide the services, not that an RN can provide these services, not that an MD can provide the services. You, they, you want to know if it can be provided by you as a provider. What you also want to know is if they're waiving the co-pays, the co-insurance, the deductible. Okay. You want to know if you need a pre-authorization for performing these services. If your patient has a visit limit specifically for an evaluation, not to the acupuncture treatment, does that reduce from the number of visits that the patient has evaluation? So some insurance companies or some plans will provide one evaluation for the whole year. You need to find out if it's take away, take away from it. And if so, is there a limit as to how many telemedicine services you can provide. We are not seeing any limits with the patients that we are calling in as a billing company, but every plan is different and it would be a good idea to find out. Also, find out, do they want you to use the telemedicine codes or do they prefer that you use the regular evaluation codes? And if so, with what modifier will their system accept it? Ask. Sometimes they'll tell you, sometimes they won't. It doesn't hurt to ask. It also is published on their website. So if you look up COVID-19 so telemedicine, you'll find out what they're looking for in terms of submissions. In the end of the conversation, document who you spoke to, what date you spoke to them. I would even write the time. Call reference number, take that. Because in the event that somebody told you, yes, we cover it, it's covered for a licensed acupuncturist, and then it doesn't get paid, you have some sort of a recourse for an appeal to say, hey, I spoke to Jenny on June 1st at so-and-so time, and here's my call reference number. Go pull a call and let me, you know, and please reprocess my claim because I was told that the patient is covered. We don't want to create a financial hardship on the patient. So with that, um, what I want to show you is, is I want to talk about some of these links. Because when you do have that session, I strongly suggest that you use a HIPAA compliance system. You don't want to compromise your patient's data. Um, these systems or these links that I listed here have some sort of a free version of um, a HIPAA compliance system, i.e. that either allow you a free trial month or, as Jeffrey pointed out, Daxi.me is free. So some of these system... Um, some of these systems are allowing you maybe a certain amount of sessions for free. If you have an EHR program, and Jeffrey is going to publish that in a minute, um, some of the EHR programs are also allowing and have systems in them that are HIPAA compliant. But again, here is some thing that the insurance companies pushed. Cigna, for example, went and said, you can use FaceTime, you can use Zoom, you can use WhatsApp you can use these system during COVID-19, even though they are HIPAA compliant, they are not HIPAA compliant. And they, they will not enforce the HIPAA penalties. So we are seeing the many companies are trying to really keep patients out of the ER, out of those emergency clinics, and they want people to stay at home and get treated from home. So they are taking, uh, and they're making a lot of, and putting a lot of waivers out there um, to really help people stay safe. Um, consent, talk about consent. Um, you do need to make sure that you have a consent with your patient. It has to be a written consent, not a verbal consent. Verbal consent um, really doesn't count. You need to make sure that it's written. Um, Jeffrey, I know we had one of the acupuncturists um, on a previous session that um, sent us a consent I didn't read, I didn't review it. Jeffrey Lassa didn't read it, Lassa didn't review it. We don't know if it's a great consent, an awful consent, <clears throat> but they, somebody told us, uh, suggested uh, for acupuncturists to use it. So we are just sharing it. Make sure you read it, make sure that it's something that fits your needs for your business before you use it. Uh, and if it works for you, by all means, use it. Um, just know that it wasn't reviewed, not by Lassa, not by any attorney, or not by me, um, but do what you want with that particular consent. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to open it up for questions. We'll try to go through your questions through the time that we have um, and make sure that we answer all your questions. All right. Well, thank you so much. And you know, that was wonderful as always. Um, and let's go look at some questions. Uh, so actually, somebody does want us to go back to the said that list of all the insurance companies on it. So if we can go back to that and show that, please. I, I, I will do that. I want to proceed with caution when I share those insurance companies because these insurance companies are and I'll, I'll go back. These insurance companies are insurance companies that we called for our patients. Yes, we are calling for many, many patients as a biller. However, you have to keep in mind that this, right, only pertains to the patients that we call. So yes, for the most part, Aetna is covering it. However, you can have a patient that it may not be covered because they have a self-funded plan or they didn't cover Acura before. So take that with a grain of salt. This is only based on the patients that we have called in. All righty. And then there was a, apparently there was a telemedicine insurance webinar uh, for Maryland practitioners recently. And they were saying that as of about one to two weeks ago, they are able to see new patients through telemedicine. And they were provided a code of 99202 as a new patient code. Are you aware of that code? So 99, okay. So, right. As I said, many insurance companies are now allowing, right? So I, what I shared with you is I want to make sure that you're familiar with what the law said, right? Because when COVID-19 is gone, I don't know if the telemedicine is going to be gone, right? And maybe in the future, we are going to be using telemedicine as an acupuncturist. So telemedicine as of today, um, and I'm just going to plug my computer before it dies out of battery. Um, so telemedicine as of today um, was now allowing acupuncturists um to exercise that procedure right when COVID-19 is gone the law says that it does have to be for existing patients okay today for this time period from March till June or from March until they take the state out of state of emergency they are making a lot of things and they're allowing you and they're waiving a lot of things that they wouldn't allow that they wouldn't allow usually if COVID-19 right wasn't here Right? So they're allowing existing patients and they're waiving co-pays and they're waiving co-insurance and they're waiving deductibles. That's only because of COVID-19. Okay, That's not something they usually do when a provider ex exercises or um, provides telemedicine services. So yes, you will be allowed to use it for new patients. Some insurance companies are telling us to use the 921202 or 203 or 204, 205, whichever one you think is fits your patients based, obviously, on complexity, et cetera. Um, but those are our evaluation codes. And um, telemedicine is an evaluation. That's what you are doing. Although you may show your patient how to do trigger points, or although you may tell your patient how to put ear seeds, you're not putting the ear seeds. The patient is putting the ear seeds. The patient is pressing these points, okay? The patient is cooking the herbs. And so it's 100% evaluation. So if insurance company is telling to use 99202 and 99203, that's fine. That's an evaluation code. We're seeing Cigna did the same, right? They're telling us to use the regular evaluation codes. And there are quite a few more insurance companies that are directing you to do the same thing. Perfect. Um, also, somebody had mentioned that they had recently used 99425 or approved for 40 minutes with Blue Cross Blue Shield. So that is possible. I need to look more into that code. We were told to use um, at most the 99423. I need to read the regulation on that code to see if it's something that we can use. So it's something that I have to do a little more research on that code, right? These codes. Um, in this particular case, have minutes associated with them. Although we think that, and if we look at the regular uh, evaluation codes, we also think they have minutes associated with them, but it's not just minutes that we look at when we perform evaluation. It's complexity, it's diagnosis, it's how many organs in, we, in the body that we touched. So I need that code before I say, yes, you can use it. Perfect. 
Um, and the next question, are telemedicine appointments taking away from patients' maximum number of visits in person that they earned by insurance? So the answer is no. It does not take away from your acupuncture visits. Again, I'll go back to what I said, is it's considered an evaluation. If your patient has a limit on the number of, of evaluation that they can have per year or per quarter or per month, I would check if it takes away from the number of evaluation, but it does not take away from the actual insertion of needles or acupuncture services. Alrighty, but that's different in the VA, correct? And that's from the VA, thank you, Jeffrey. Yes, it is different from the VA. So if you have VA patients, it does take away from the visit limit from the VA. VA does give us a certain number of visits that can be used. Um, it gives us a start date and an end date. Um, it gives us a visit limit and it does take away from it. The VA did tell us to use the regular evaluation codes. Just make sure that they are listed on your packet. And if they're not, call them, ask them to amend it and to make sure that you can perform evaluations on your patient. But it does take away from it. Alrighty, and then let's see, next question here. Uh, somebody did ask if this webinar is being recorded. It is being recorded. So you guys will all have access to the record as soon as we end. One option would be to just stay on this page. And then as soon as it ends, the recording's available. Also, five minutes after we end, all of you will receive an email with a link to watch the video on them. Um, and then I'm now gonna go into the questions tab. I just wanted to get through the, the chats before I could get there. So just bear with me a second. Um, so can you clarify when you're going through the timing of like the 21 to 30 minutes, um, mm -hmm. somebody wanted to know, so the treatments aren't allowed for longer than 30 minutes. So let's talk through the timing. So, and, and I'm sorry, Jeffy, what was the last comment about the 30 minutes? So um, she was asking if um, they cannot treat for longer than 30 minutes because of that. No, you can definitely treat for longer than 30 minutes, right? So um, this is 21 mil minutes plus, okay? So I, you can sit with your patients for two hours, okay? This is what they're gonna be charging. Um, whether you sit with the patient for two hours or for 21 minutes, you will also be getting paid the same. So um, this is just a range um, that we suggested, but it's technically 21 minutes and over. So. Righty. And then would you be able to repeat the information on modifiers? Yeah. So we're looking at two modifiers. Jeffrey, um, let's bring up that um, claim, okay? We're looking at actually three modifiers, to be correct. So we're looking at modifier for telemedicine of 95. Cigna told us to use GQ, and some insurance companies are telling us to use GT. Uh, we've been using 95 on every single claim. Believe it or not, as much as Cigna told us to use um, E&M codes or evaluations, initially when we started the billing for our clients, before Cigna came out and published, no, 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 use, mod, you know, use evaluations, we used telemedicine codes with the modifiers and they've paid, they paid about 50 bucks. Um, uh, Aetna pays about $70 and we saw Blue Cross Blue Shield, Shield claims that are coming back allowing $100, paying $70 and um, this was an out of network provider um, they, the patient had a $30 pay that they needed to pay for that telemedicine service. So they're in a the range of 50 to $70. The modifiers are, we're using 95s and so far, and we just started using for Cigna, the regular E&M codes, um, with a modifier of GQ. Alrighty. Um, and then any info on, um, for county clients doing telemedicine, are there regulations that they must follow to be legal within the scope of medicine, of their medicine? So it's, it's exactly the same, right? Exactly the same um, regulations, right? You can see your cash, and I won't call them cash patients, I'll call them point of service patients. Um, you need to charge them. You need to charge them exactly what you're charging the insurance company. Um, it has to be the same. Uh, you can give them a very small discount, um, but I would charge exact same prices um, across the board, whether they paid point of service or you paid the insurance company or you are billing the insurance company. Alrighty. Um, 
Okay, next question here was, the VA says to also make sure that we've signed up for the new service that they are switching PCCC to. Do you know anything uh, about just, that? Yeah, that's just electronic submission. Um, yeah, that's their, okay. Now we're getting into insurance billing. <laughs> insurance <laughs> billing. So every insurance company has what's called a payer ID. It's an electronic payer ID. It's kind of like a tag that gives us an address. Instead of mailing in claims, it gives me an ID that says, if you put this five digit code, this is where my claim is gonna be mailed to. So yes, PCCC is their payer ID for submission of insurance. And if you're not sure, you can always reach out to us and we'll be happy to bill your claims for the VAs. Alrighty. Would you mind repeating um, the legal reimbursements that we're seeing with the codes? Yeah, so we are seeing, um, I, we didn't have any clients that did less than 21 minutes. So all of our clients between limitations and really spending time with their patients on the phone. And you have to keep in mind that it's over a period of seven days um, was about, we're about between 21 to 30 minutes is what our client's sending us. Um, and we're seeing a reimbursement between 50 to $70 um, is what we're seeing come back. Right. Uh, and then also just to confirm, uh, somebody was not sure if you were saying for the modifier of GQ or G2, it was G as in girl, Q as in Quebec. Or Q. Right. <laughs> All righty. But I don't see any other questions in here. So unless anyone has a last minute question that they fire in there before I finish talking, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. And I want to thank Sarit for um, providing all of this amazing information. Um, we also appreciate that you did this for so many different states and so many different practitioners. It's a huge, you know, huge um, thing. And we really, really, really appreciate you. Um, I'm actually putting in the chat uh, Sarit's website. So if you have any questions for her directly about her service, go to allacuservices.com and she can get those answered for you. Um, and actually, it looks like we did get one more question in. If we have a patient consent form in hand from our patient, do we have to get a new one that includes a specific uh, mention of telemedicine? Yes, absolutely. You need to make sure that you do have a consent to perform telemedicine because your current consent talks about acupuncture, right? You want to make sure that you have a telemedicine consent. And specifically what you want to focus on is um, where the data gets compromised. In the event that the data gets compromised, you are not liable for the data being compromised. So you want to make sure that you have some sort of a paragraph that talks about data being compromised and protects yourself. That's perfect. And then I did put a, a, the link again to the consent form that was shared in a previous webinar. Again, the disclaimer is that neither read myself or a lawyer has reviewed this, but it was shared by an acupuncturist at a previous webinar. Um, so again, I thank you so much, Sari. Thank you to everyone for coming today. I want all of you to be aware that we have a lot of different content out there for you right now. Um, there's a lot of upcoming webinars that will be hosted through our online CEU partner, Net of Knowledge. Um, that is going to be uh, daily. So every single day at 4 p.m. Eastern time, there is a daily webinar and I am putting a link to that for you guys in here too. The Pacific College of Health and Science, formerly the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine, they're also hosting a lot of free webinars coming up. And LASA OMS and Pacific College will be co-hosting John Chen on the 30th of April to discuss the science and the research on the Chinese herbs that are being used to treat COVID in China. So again, thank you to everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful day and our thoughts and best wishes are with you all. And have a great weekend. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thanks, Sri. It was really wonderful. Yes, thank you.